Hey everyone, this is Andrew Ty and welcome to my YouTube channel. So the brand new M2 Pro and M2 Max Apple Silicon Max have just been released. And today we're going to be doing benchmarks of four different AAA titles. We're going to be looking at a native ARM AAA game release, as well as a first person shooter that runs through the Rosetta 2 translation layer. I'm also going to be comparing two highly requested Windows AAA titles that run surprisingly well on the M2 Pro and M2 Max chips. So if you haven't subscribed already, then please consider subscribing and you be able to keep up to date with the latest Mac gaming news. So the first game that we're going to be looking at is the very recently released Mac OS port of Resident Evil Village. Now this game is natively optimized for the ARM64 CPU architecture. And furthermore, it is also the first game to make use of the Metal 3 graphics API. This allows us to take advantage of Metal FX upscaling. And here we've turned it on to the quality setting. So on the left, we have the MacBook Pro 14 inch running the M2 Pro with 16 gigabytes of RAM and 19 GPU cores. Furthermore, on the right, we have the MacBook Pro 16 inch running the M2 Max chip with 38 GPU cores. So despite the fact that the M2 Max has doubled the GPU core count versus the M2 Pro, in this particular test, we're only getting around 50 to 55% extra frame rate. This is a little bit surprising because in another test with Shadow of the Tomb Raider, which I did in my last video, the performance increase of the M2 Max versus the MT Pro was about 90 to 95% increased FPS. I also tested the game at the default settings with the Metal FX turned off and the M2 Max remains only about 55 to 60% faster than the M2 Pro. So in this game, I do recommend turning on Metal FX upscaling onto the quality preset. You get a pretty substantial frame rate boost at minimal loss in quality. So as you can see, the M2 Pro and the M2 Max both run this game pretty beautifully. If you're really looking to take advantage of the 120 Hertz ProMotion display, then you're probably gonna want to slash out for the M2 Max, which can hold up this frame rate even through tricky fight sequences with lots of enemies on screen at once. So next up is the game Metro Exodus. The macOS port for this game was released back in 2022. This is actually an Intel application that runs under the x86 64-bit CPU architecture. And therefore, in order to run on ARM64, it needs to run through the Rosetta 2 translation layer. This can potentially introduce slowdowns, especially on the CPU side. However, graphically intensive games like Metro Exodus are very much GPU bound. Here we can see a roughly 80 to 90% performance increase running the M2 Max versus the M2 Pro. However, both machines can run this game very respectively on the high preset at 1080p. Here you can see the M2 Max sometimes goes over the 200 FPS mark, whilst in other areas it'll dip under 100 FPS. However, like I said, both machines managed to run this game beautifully, and this is all despite the fact that it's not really optimized for Apple Silicon hardware. So next up is the highly requested Witcher 3. Now, there is no actual macOS port for this game. This is actually the Windows game being run through a translation layer called Crossover. So Crossover makes use of something called Wine, which translates Windows graphics API calls into macOS compatible graphics API calls. And not only this, the Witcher 3 is still an x86 64-bit application, and so it has to make use of Rosetta 2 in order to work on the M1 or M2 chip. And furthermore, it also makes use of a couple of extra translation layers, including DXVK, which translates direct X to Vulkan, and Molten VK, which translates Vulkan into Metal. So with all this translation and emulation going on, it's pretty cool that we're able to get this working so well on Apple Silicon hardware. So here we're running the 4.00 patch, which is the next gen update of The Witcher 3. This is being played at 1080p under the high preset with Nvidia Hairworks turned off. So even in combat, the M2 Pro is hovering around the 45 to 50 FPS mark, which I definitely say is very playable. And the M2 Max is running about 60% faster than the M2 Pro. Now there is the occasional stutter and this is due to shader compilation. Once a particular animation or spell has been compiled, then when it's repeated in the future, then it shouldn't stutter again. So anyway, if you wanna find out how to get The Witcher 3 running on Apple Silicon Max, whether it's the M2 chip or the earlier M1 chip, then please make sure to check out the link in the description for my tutorial video. So the last game we're going to be looking at today is Grand Theft Auto 5. So like The Witcher 3, this is not a macOS game. This is a Windows game being run again through Crossover. Here we are running at 1080p on the default settings. And here it does a pretty good job even on the M2 Pro and M2 Max chips. So one curious thing is that the performance difference between the M2 Pro and M2 Max isn't necessarily that pronounced in the benchmarks that I've done. Here I can see that the M2 
Ubuntu Max is only getting around 10 to 15 extra FPS or roughly around a 10% increase in performance at this particular resolution and detail setting. So both machines seem to be able to play the benchmark and single player game at a very respectable frame rate. This could be better optimized for the M2 Max chip. However, considering the fact that this is a Windows title running on macOS on an ARM64 CPU, the results are pretty impressive nonetheless. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this comparison between the gaming performance of the M2 Pro and the M2 Max chips. If you have any further requests, then please make sure to leave a comment and also let me know what you think. Anyway, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.